Hi everyone, Mr. H here. So good to see you again. And today we are going to begin a big bunch of lessons on the instruments in the orchestra, the collection of instruments and their families. Now this is important because not only do you get to learn about what instruments are out there and how they're grouped together and how they work, but many of you, depending on what grade you're in, are getting close to being able to start playing music of your own. Uh, fourth graders this year, you're going to be going on to be fifth graders next year, so you're going to have a little bit of time but fifth graders this year who are going on to be sixth graders, we have beginning band at Linda Elementary School. So hearing about the instruments like this can maybe get you thinking about an instrument you want to learn when you get there. And sixth graders who are going on to middle school, all the middle schools in the district have their own bands and they have their own starter bands too. So if you haven't played it this year, you can get started next year and they can get you, they can get you started. So again, you can pick your instrument and know what they have and know how they sound. So we're gonna break this up into chunks because there's a lot to talk about, so much more than I can fit into one music class. We're gonna have to break it down, but we're gonna get started today. So to begin with, instruments come in three, well, really four families. So that's a typo right there. The first family is the woodwinds. Now woodwinds are traditionally made out of wood or they use wood to play, as we'll find out in a little bit. These instruments include the flute, the clarinet, the saxophone, the oboe, and the bassoon. And if you don't know what those are, don't worry, we'll see them. The next instrument family is the brass family, which is traditionally made out of, well, brass. And those instruments include the trumpet, the cornet, the French horn, the trombone, the euphonium, the baritone, and the tuba. And again, if you don't know what all those are, don't worry, we'll see them soon. The next group would be the percussion. These are the ones that usually have sticks or you have to hit in order to play. And those include the snare drums, the bass drums, the xylophones, and the marimba. And the final group in the orchestra is called the strings, which mean that you use strings to play them. These could be the violin, the viola, the cello, the string bass, and the guitar. So today we're gonna talk about the woodwind family. So woodwinds are instruments that use air to play. These are called aerophones which is a fancy way of saying you blow into them and they make their sound. Now, woodwinds use keys to change the note. It's kind of hard to see on this picture here, but as we get closer looks at some of the instruments, you'll see that they have buttons on them, either like this or like this if it's a flute or anything else, and those different buttons are called keys. The keys cover the holes in the instruments that change the notes. Now, some woodwinds, like the clarinet, the saxophone, the oboe, and the bassoon, use a wooden reed to make their sound. It's an actual piece of wood that they have on the instrument and they put it in their mouth and when they blow through it, the reed vibrates to make the sound. Now flutes, they don't use a reed. They're all made out of metal and instead you blow over the top of a hole. We'll, we'll see it in a sec, but they still have the same kind of keys to woodwinds and way back in the prehistoric times, flutes actually were made out of wood, which is why they're part of the woodwind family. So now that we know what a woodwind is and kind of how an overall woodwind works, we're gonna go down to each individual instrument. And we are going to start with the flute. Here's the flute right here. So as you can see, this is definitely not made out of wood. It is definitely made out of metal. But you see the keys, those little circle buttons that they have on everything are the keys that they use to play. Now the flute is already very different than many others. Instead of having it in front of you, you hold it off to the side. Also, if you can see you're all the way on the left side, you can see it a little bit on this picture here in the video, you play it not by blowing into it, but by blowing over it. Have you ever taken a water bottle or a soda bottle or something like that, drank a little bit out of it and then blew over the top of it and it made a sound? That is exactly what the flute does to play one of those notes. You blow the air through it and you change the keys and we can see it really quick on this flute player playing music from Moana. We're not gonna watch the whole thing, we're just gonna watch a little bit. I thought we could a little bit there. Yeah, we go. Hear it. She is getting ready to play.
Okay. We're going to pause it there. Like I said, we're not going to be able to see all of these videos, but I just wanted to get you an idea. So you could hear it. It sounds has a really bright tone. It's really a high note. But as you can see, when she was playing, she was blowing over the top of the flute and she was moving her fingers like this to change the different notes. So that is the flute, one of the members of the woodwind family. Now, oh, we don't want to start it again. Nope, come on. There we go. Now, the next one is the clarinet. Now, I'm sure if you've seen SpongeBob SquarePants, you know that the clarinet is. It's that thing that Squidward plays. But also, it's a member of the woodwind family. Now, this one, unfortunately, I don't have a picture of it right here. These are the ones that use reeds. They're a piece of wood that is actually attached to the very top part right here of the instrument. And when you blow through it, the reed vibrates, and that makes the sound. Now, as you can see, it comes in different shapes and sizes, and these aren't exactly all accurate, but you'll see them in the video. The one that you see here on the left that I think you can see my cursor moving over is your basic clarinet. We call that the soprano clarinet, but whenever you say, oh, I play clarinet, that's usually the one you're talking about. And you can see all the keys and holes that you use to play it. Now, this one right next to it, even though it's a little smaller in the picture, it's actually one of the bigger ones. This one is called a bass clarinet. So usually when the clar you see a regular clarinet, it's oh, maybe about this big. A bass clarinet, as you can see in the picture right here, you have to sit down to play and it reaches from the floor to where you are. So it's actually a really big instrument and it sounds a lot lower. Now the next one, this picture here, even though it's the biggest picture, it's not the biggest one. This is what we call an alto clarinet. It's actually in between the two instruments. It's a little bit bigger than a soprano clarinet, but it's not as big as a bass clarinet. So we're gonna listen really quickly to this group here, which is a group of five clarinetists playing a quick song. So you can hear and see what they sound like. A soprano clarinet. Bass clarinet's on the other side, also clarinet's next to it. to pause it there again we have to keep on moving and make sure we're getting all of the instruments in but did you hear the different sounds of the clarinet the one you heard the most was the soprano clarinet the regular clarinet they had three of them in the group but the lower sound especially the really low one that was the bass clarinet and the alto clarinet and they're special to the uh, band as well now normally when you start playing in band you're going to start on the soprano clarinet it's just easier to start on that one so you play on that, and after you get a little bit better, you move on to the bass clarinet or the alto clarinet or whatever other clarinet you want. But that way, if you don't know how to play one, you can play them all. All right, very good. Oh, we don't want to start playing again. There we go. Now this next one here, these are the saxophones. Now saxophones are a little weird, but weird in a good way. They're still woodwind instruments. As you can see, looking at all these pictures, you can see that we have a bunch of keys here that all work that way. And if you look closely at this one on the left, you can actually see the reed, that piece of wood that they use to play their instrument. And as you can also see, they all come in different shapes and sizes. But the one thing that makes them unique, they're actually made out of brass. So some people think that, oh, well, they should be in the brass family. But the thing is, they're not. They're still woodwinds because you have to use the reed to play it and they use the keys. They're just a wooden instrument made out of brass. So they're a little interesting. Now, when you say, oh, I want to play saxophone, you're probably going to start with the one over here on the left that I'm circling. This is called the alto saxophone. It's not the smallest one, but it's it's pretty small. It's, it's still pretty about, you know, meh, this big, I don't know. I know my screen's a little small, so that probably doesn't help. But it's the one you will start on. Now, if you look at the picture in the middle, there's two right next to each other. The one that I'm circling now, the one on the left of the middle picture, is the tenor saxophone, which is actually the next step bigger. 
the what? Excuse me. The one on the right side, which looks like a metal clarinet, is actually called a soprano saxophone, and it's actually smaller and higher than the alto saxophone. So you have a soprano, which is the smallest, an alto, which is a little bit bigger, a tenor, which is a little bit bigger than that, and then you have this one on the right, the baritone saxophone, which is even bigger. This is one that you'd either have to play sitting down or with a harness, and again, it's pretty tall. So usually when you start playing in band, you're gonna start on the alto saxophone before you switch to the tenor or the baritone or the soprano, depending on what they need. So we're gonna to listen to this group right here of a quartet, which is four of them playing. And if I look at the picture, I think I see two altos. Well, we'll see two altos and then a tenor and a baritone. Let's take a look. Now they're also being silly. <laughs> So two altos on the left, then a tenor, and then a baritone. put the pause right there but then you can hear those were all the saxophones we had the two altos on the left the tenor kind of in the middle and then the baritone was the big one on the right and now we were playing the pink panther theme which i hope you've all heard before if not you just did and again these are one of those instruments that you'll hear a lot of in bands you'll probably start on the alto saxophone before you go on to the other ones my favorite is the baritone saxophone because it gets really low that sounds really cool now these next instruments once i get going come on there we go these ones are what we call double reeded instruments. And it's really kind of hard to see because they always have their reeds in their mouths, but instead of having one piece of wood, they have actually two smaller ones that stick together like this. And they blow through them, which causes them to vibrate together to make the sound. And that is the oboe, this one here on the left, and this one in the video, and the English horn, which is on the bottom on the right. Now the oboe and the English horn, those ones you probably won't see unless you get to high school and play in band there, but if you really want to, maybe you start playing on the clarinet and you get really good at it, then you can switch to the oboe. Now these ones, they use the same keys, and the oboe is actually about the same size as a clarinet, maybe a little bit smaller, but the English horn is a little bit bigger. But as you can hear, they have a different sound. It's really high up there. So this one right here, we are gonna hear a little bit of a band song that has uh, an oboe soloist in it. So we'll listen and watch him play the oboe.
clarinet there too. All right. Again, we're going to have to pause and move on, but that was the oboe. And I, this, I liked this video because you got a really good look at uh, the player moving the keys, playing the keys. And that's the same for all woodwind instruments. They use different key combinations to change the notes. And as you play, you learn them all. So that's how the oboe and the English horn work. Now we have one more that we're going to look at today, and that's called the bassoon. Now the bassoon is re another double reed instrument. In fact, if you look at the bottom right, we have a few of the reeds here on the piano and it works the same way as the oboe. Put it all in your mouth and blow. Now the bassoon is a little bit different. First off, it's really tall. You have to play it sitting down. When we look at the video, uh, we'll see it for a little, we'll see it for how big it is. Um, but it's a lower sound. You still use the same keys but they also get even bigger. If you look at this picture down here at the bottom in the middle, that is called a contra bassoon, which is an even bigger bassoon that they had to fold up and twist together to make sure it all fit together. So now we're gonna watch a video of a group of four bassoonists, three bassoons and one contra bassoon, play a, a little quick tune. I have to skip partway through the video because they talk a lot in the first part and that's not important. I just want to get you to the music. Tasia, now I have a but <laughs> when you skip the source word, skip. The, I think the fun thing about skip. barely you have the um, this kind no of skip. Here we go. <laughs> for the bassoon. Now, I said earlier, the bassoon is a really low sound. You can also especially hear it in the contra bassoon. But did you know that the bassoon actually has the biggest range of any instrument in the band, even in the orchestra? It can reach the lowest note and the highest note, and it stretches the farthest. And we can hear some of those high notes that I played a little bit earlier. So, those are all the woodwinds. And once again, oboe, bassoon, English horn, you may not see them right away, but saxophone, clarinet, and flute and all their types, you will definitely see as you get into beginning band, whether here at Linda or over at, at the middle schools. So these are all the woodwinds. Now, the next time we meet up together, we're going to start talking about the brass instruments, but that's all the time we have for today. So until then, have a good day, and I'll see you later. Bye.